Hello and welcome to Football is Nice with me, Russell, Edward, Gulliver, Brandon. I don't know, Russell Brand, I'm called. And uh, Gareth Roy. Gareth Roy is here as well. As well as Jenny Mae Finn. And in Football is Nice, we talk about football and the invisible forces that carry us to glory. We talk about trivial gossip, silly things and occasionally, unwittingly, plunder into the underworld that supports all observable phenomena. This week with Carlton Cole, and we told him <laughs> that. We said Carlton will be... We want the phenomena. We've got to be able to see that phenomena. We're wearing... You're wearing the same top as last time, Yeah. Now. Why is that? Well, I've worn it many times this week. You like I'm so, it? I'm so pleased with it. <laughs> oh, like it's a present. <laughs> yeah. You know when you were a kid and you wore something over and over again? I do that if you still. Liked it. Yeah, well, exactly, so do I. That's what I've realised this week is that's what I do. I like Einstein before me. I'm a great... Great physicist, but also it's I like not the to... first time that's been compared. <laughs> that's really obvious, really, to anyone. But also, I'd wear the same stuff. It's just weird, isn't it? Einstein, you know, that he was really clever and he wore the same stuff. <laughs> it's not enough of a legacy, really, for a man that you know, he, he was MC squares at him, like theory of relativity. Yeah. A lot of stuff, though, it doesn't hold up to quantum physics, so maybe I'm better. <laughs> Again, it's been said before. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't. I don't. This is not where I intended this podcast to go, Gareth. Right. Well, we've decided to take things more seriously and to radically improve the podcast, haven't yes, we? And we've yeah. got a lot of good things yeah. coming up, as well as your reviews. We're going to be doing Russell and Gareth's football breakdown. We haven't I'm, talked about your shirt yet, though. This well, isn't another new one. It's a retro shirt, um, like you know that they make now. You can get it off of the West Ham website. I'm not sure what this is. I don't know that yeah. that would have been there in the old days. This Bookta. crest, Bookta. I've I think not heard of Bookta. I think Bookta. I don't know that they were making stuff in 1975 when ah. this shirt is a replica of i wouldn't want to wear something actually from 1975 though but that i bet you've got items of clothing in you i've got items of clothing i think i've had 20 years now yeah definitely. like t-shirts and things yeah. i think oh my god i've had that <laughs> i've had that when i was on mtv as a little kid <laughs> like do you know what i mean yeah things are sticking around your this is so this is wembley 1975 how far back are you going because every week you go further back I'm in going time so back far <laughs> back in time I'll be, it'll be tim's ironworks <laughs> i'll be wearing a, sort of something made out of a, a cloth sackcloth i'll be kicking a, a bladder around the field with a hundred other geezers by the end of this yeah do you think i'm going too back in t- too no, far no. back in time like martin I'm... mcfly <laughs> do, 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 will this end with me having, going to bed with my mother <laughs> And uh, you know, I know people talk about that from um, Back to the Future. Anyway, look, we've got reviews. We've got Carlton Cole, West Ham star. Play it's got to be one of the best ever fan chants, hasn't it? Carlton Cole. It's a really good it's one. It's a brilliant one. What I sometimes like about fan chants, and I got this even in, in the Euros with that Gareth Southgate one. Yeah. Gareth, you're the one. You still turn me on. Yeah. Like, I liked that it yeah. had something in it that was jarring. <laughs> yeah. And that, but and I think that's why the, it sort of caught on, that's isn't right. it? You said that yeah. at least. Because uh, fans have usually got a sense of humour, haven't they? It's and a humorous. Yeah. It's it's got what is it? It's it's puckish and tricky. The the world of fans. I don't like it when it turns into dark malevolence. But when it's like playful stupidness, yeah. Like one of my uh, memories of being at West Ham when I was probably sixteen, I reckon, was being behind a goal. I think on the North Bank, and like they were sort of singing, um, like we're all effing mental, we're all effing mental, yeah. sort of chants that were popular at the time. But then that, this bit that I liked was when they went, let's all form a circle, let's all <laughs> form a circle. And then they sort of formed a circle, which meant that there was a space in the terrace, which was actually in retrospect dangerous, but like it all crushed everyone up. And But I, I even at the time thought, form like using yeah. form as a verb like that that's yeah. a strange thing to have done let's all form a circle <laughs> and also it's like it's not a, it's a best mental yeah. it doesn't make sense as an idea but they did do it and it was funny so yeah it sounds brilliant football is nice yeah where could that head to let's all i mean that could go anywhere couldn't it you're right you can go anywhere but let's all do a musical <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is like it, they they don't limit themselves no. it's been a big week in football it really has because of like there's been surprises and shocks but look, look look this is what people say about this love the show says john barnes no sam owen and he's calling this he's post oh barnes. okay love the show particularly love the interview with john barnes he once led me and some friends out of a hall of mirrors when we were lost absolute legend <laughs> that's the sort of thing that would happen in a dream it's not a metaphor is it no you're in a hall of mirrors you're lost you're confused luckily john barnes <laughs> has arrived to lead you out 
That's like so a dream. John Barnes was in the Hall of Mirrors. I wonder what John Barnes was doing in that Hall of Mirrors. Yeah. Probably doing some subtle social commentary. <laughs> Probably doing sort of like a, 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 a guitar is and like sort of style postmodern analysis of what... Mi- you see, we all look in mirrors. Uh, everything is a refraction and a reflection of reality. That impression all it- comes from the LucasAid advert, doesn't it? Does it? Well, it, it, surely. Get Mostly. to your thirst fast. <laughs> we all did that as kids, didn't we? We all did that as kids. We really, even be- our generation believed in Lucas Aid. <laughs> oh, we God, actually yeah. thought it had power. Oh, up until... Like, people give it when you're ill. Like, yeah. it's a medicine. Yeah. Right, I'm afraid it's stage four <laughs> cancer. Don't worry, it's why Lucas Aid here. Why did you have to do the cancer? I don't know, really, gal, because I... I, I suppose because I couldn't do COVID. Sure. So, <laughs> like, so I went to cancer. Right, okay. And I, and I you know, like... Cancer did blight my family as a child. Oh, okay. My mother you and have that. A past there. So I've got a past. People mm. might not know that I like grew up under the cloud of cancer. No. Like, and you took drugs, did you? Apparently, I've never mentioned that girl. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not comfortable talking about that. <laughs> I'm not comfortable talking about it, Gareth. Don't ever bring that up, mate. Please respect. Would sorry. You, would sorry. you respect my privacy? <laughs> would you? My privacy. What are you, Mark Zuckerberg? <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. This is an, another review. Amazing, yeah. even for those indifferent to football, says Brittany of Arabia. Oh. Indifferent. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Well, she continue. I have close to zero interest in football and initially tried this for Russell's erudite chat and the banter with JMF. That JM I don't like Jenny May Finn having a handle, do you? Well, uh, people do call me JMF in my real life. <laughs> what real life? <laughs> you don't have a real life. Outside of you. Yeah. Ooh. Isn't there a rapper or something called JME? Is that? Is yeah, that... yeah, yeah. Russell liked him. Oh. oh, yeah, I like him. I still like him. Don't you He's like tense, a grime Jen. lad. <laughs> and what about, um, isn't there someone that's a dancer called JML? Oh, yeah. J... <laughs> isn't JML? Didn't they, they, were a pop, they were a pop group. JML with no, JML. JML. No, JLS. JLS. JML is like a shop, Why are there it? all these like, <laughs> yeah. people and, and groups? what about EMF? JD Sports. <laughs> are EMF the You're one? You're unbelievable. <laughs> They're the ones that burnt the million. That's not them, is it? That's KLF. Bloody hell. (laughs) Now, who are the ones that sell sofas? That's DFS. (laughs) (laughs) Their band is different. Their songs come in the form of couches. Right, this is, we're going to drop our new track. What is it? It's this three piece suite. We're going to burn a million cushions <laughs> as a oh, statement. Think of the environment. That's why we're doing it, man. We're DFS. <laughs> we're doing a, we've got Tammy Wynette. She's going to stitch some embroidery into these cushions. Now, if you don't know who KLF is or EMF are, yeah. the last few minutes of your life have been taken from ruined. you. Ruined. Ruined. Yeah. Or actually ruined. And you might have ruined the next few minutes with mm. sheer stupidity. I bet, I'd love to go into talking about that burning of the million pounds, but let's not because we're talking football. But we did I'm, it on Under the Skin. You've talked about that already. Yeah, if you yeah. subscribe to Under the Skin on Luminary. I'm surprised you didn't hear it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> jibe. Inter-office jibes. Politics of the movement there. It's not Jesus, it's ch, as in, oh, k, as in loch. Jesus. 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 Oh, okay. Ah. Janty, this nickname not be taken. I am not in... Okay, Russell. <laughs> Do you want some Lucasaid? I've not took my meds. <laughs> Get me some Get Lucasaid. Get me an isotronic <laughs> drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's uh, look at this lady name. Uh, Janet, this name, nickname, you're not taken. Look at this lady name. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your lady name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not into Premier League football. I don't support well, why a team. why are we doing this podcast? <laughs> no, this is still oh, the best. sorry. I don't particularly care for it. I've listened to all these episodes twice now. That's more than us. <laughs> and I'm torn. Well done. Thank you, Janet. It's not my nickname to be taken. I'm torn between supporting Hull City, West Ham and Norwich. I could listen to Gareth and Russell. Put your name first there, girl. And the occasional quip from Jenny May Finn. That's about <laughs> all I'm willing to part with. Talk about the merits of watching paint dry. Love from Tooting. What a weird ending. <laughs> You're in, all that came from Tooting in South London. So there you are. We're not going to do the paint drying chat. No way. Le- leave your reviews for us. On, uh, you know, just leave a review. If you want, here's a funny game. Say what you really think, but always give it five stars. Yeah. You can say, like, you can critique it. One person said, like, the guests don't understand it. And that's sometimes <laughs> what I feel like when I'm carefully handling an ex footballer because yeah. out of love and respect for them, yeah. I think, oh, I'm not sure I understand this. We've got Tony Adams coming next week, Carlton Cole oh, today. Blimey. You were talking to Tim Lovejoy, Erstwhile of Soccer AM, one yes. of the sort of, in a sense, who all girds the style of Pioneer, lad. Pioneer, you could Pioneer say. Pioneer around lad chat. Yep. 
like up there with Frank and David Skinner and Deal, yeah. like sort of recognizing that football has this culture that's untapped. If you think that, that's what I meant a bit, mate, when I was saying about the the shots of fans leaving. Like I don't think you'd have got that in sort of when it was like, well, the, the Rovers are two up at half time, but look, Stanley Matthews, he's making a change. Yeah. Like in them days, it wouldn't have gone. There's a lot of trouble in the boardroom. Daniel Levy under a lot of pressure. Like they didn't talk about the gossip of yeah, it. Yeah, the culture of the game. The culture of the game. Mm. The culture of the game. <laughs> I dreamt about David Moyes. But now, now you could say that that's football punditry and football programming has become almost exclusively about the culture of the game. I mean that you mm. know when you used to just have match of the day and that was maybe the only show about football. Uh, it stands to reason that they need something else to fill the time with. Oh, and it becomes so the content. kind of dominating uh, aspect of the game now, doesn't it? Because I suppose, it, in a way, un they un I didn't unconsciously pretend, that's the wrong way of saying it, they weren't aware, at least in their presentation and their content, that really it's the culture. There's not like that many people that are nerdishly watching the game, like, no, no, like... I know there are people yeah. that are like, no, that we need to alter this formation radically. And I really enjoy it, say, when there's the analysis of you, what went wrong for United against Liverpool and you can sort of see, like, you know, I like tactical analysis, but the whole thing really is emotion yes. rather than, it's like rather than esoteric students of football. That's that's obviously an elite group of people and even people that play like 11 aside on Sunday and sort of say, no, we've got to sort it out tactically or we've got to work on the overlaps or whatever. That's not as big a group as the people who are like interested in the phenomena of celebrity or the feeling of going to a game. Or, and the, you know, yeah. I, might, I mean, I've literally only just thought of this now. Uh -oh. but, so who knows whether it's right or not. But um, especially with the documentary in mind that we've been talking about a lot, uh, the BBC one, is it a coincidence that the way in which the Premier League has grown over the last 20 years to become, as they say, the biggest league in the world, the most watched league in the world, mm. is it a coincidence that one of the biggest aspects of that has been Rupert Murdoch? Oh, a media mogul. A media mogul. So, uh, and they've played so much You only on... get media moguls. You do, don't you? You don't get moguls in another field. Yeah. But go on, this media mogul. Well, as in, when we're talking about how the, the culture of the game has become, has almost, you know, usurped the, the kind of intricacies of the, of the tactics and things like that, and certainly in terms of how much, con how much time is spent on, on that content. Maybe it's not a coincidence that, you know, one of the key mm. figures in that is someone who's all about creating chat, talk, culture, all of that th around, um, mm. you know, around this kind of social aspect of, of, of the game and, and, and all other things. Okay, John Baudrillard. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, I think you're right, actually. And I think that what, um, that in a sense is the same thing. It's like, we have a, like, I remember when I heard people watch soap operas and reality shows because we live atomized lives now and we don't have a shared set of next door, of tribal neighbours or whatever that we can talk about and go, oh, bloody hell, yeah. Janet is not my real nickname as uh, having an affair with the person that wrote the other review. You know, we, we need to, synthesize the experience of community because we require community yeah gossip is like a valuable exchange of information yeah that's what tabloids are aren't mm. they I, I always kind of used to think when you see and i'm not trying to stereotype or anything but you see like a a builder on his way to work or something and i only say this because i would literally see this we used to i used to work opposite a building site and the guys would come into the cafes and things and they'd have a copy of the sun under mm. their arm and you know, you're not getting... Well, I think what it is, it's kind of shorthand for, as you say, like gossip. It's a kind of chummy um, accompaniment, isn't it, you know? Chummy accompaniment. That would be a good slogan for them. The yeah. sun, a chummy accompaniment. <laughs> I, I, I actually think it, that it's... Um, I know what you mean. I used to like read tabloids, and like, but like the, what, the other day I went in a shop and I see them all laid out. Yeah. I was getting some magazines for my kids. I get them these magazines where it has a lot of free plastic stuff, and then feel so terrible about it, like, <laughs> yeah, like sure. sort of Peppa Pig accoutrements and like yeah. all these things from My Little Pony and stuff. <laughs> and then you think, oh god, this is dreadful that I've participated <laughs> in this, but they will like it. Yeah, of course. Anyway, I saw all the newspapers laid out, and actually the thing I felt was evil oh god like yeah. i felt like this is evil stuff yeah i mean it. as and i was saying that i started to think oh, this sounds like an endorsement of this i'm not in any way saying it's a good thing you're right it we're looks... trapped in a trauma cycle we require yeah. the stimulant like we like we don't know how to recognize love anymore we're all trapped in a traumatized state but uh, anyway we do enough podcasts about that <laughs> 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 hey i dreamt about david moyes 
Wow, okay. It was nice to have him there in my dream. Was it? What, what, what I was happened? sort of at the club. I was going to go and visit this ice. He wanted me to do some ice therapy. I wasn't a player, Gal. It wasn't even in my dreams. I Is, don't play it, for West Ham. What's the context of West Ham? Is this West Ham in their kind of current for like the current setup and everything there's no like magical element to this at all there are many magical elements oh. mate in fact the whole space that we're in it's i guess i've been watching squid games so the whole sort <laughs> of air place that this is happening is not what a training facility should look like <laughs> at all it's, there's too many lurid colors right. it's like it's weird there yeah. but my feelings towards david moyes in the dream are very positive and right. like oh this i can trust this guy but well, was he a friend in the dream did you know him or were you interacting for the first time or how? we was there was a lot of familiarity and a real <laughs> ease between us not like erotic in any way it no. was we were just a couple of good guys and he was the senior one right. i was very much looking up to him he was in charge and were you being brought in to kind of train players or help in some capacity i feel like my my presence was regarded as positive <laughs> by the lads right in general that maybe Moyes had thought we're doing well we're in fourth we're joint third yeah. we're in the champions league positions However, you know if there's one thing that can take help this us to so the can, next level yeah. to sustain this, let's get controversial <laughs> social commentator and comic, yeah. Russell Brand, That's right. and bring him into the heart of this <laughs> thriving, <laughs> fragile. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like how Guardiola will bring Noel uh, Gallagher yeah. in. To... Less so of late, though. When's oh, the last really? time you saw him? I don't know. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he's just you don't see it as much anymore. I've got a lot of things from my breakdown. Oh, fantastic. Well, not a lot, but some. And what, should we pre prepare for yeah, Carlton? Prepare for Carl. 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 It's 13 minutes. <coughs> Always believe. 13 minutes to Carlton. And then it'll be the breakdown. Okay. I've Loads got, to talk about, isn't there? We've got to talk about Conte. Conte, we have to. We've got to talk about Conte. God, oh, seven Poor days old, in... Yeah, everything's Nuno. changed. Just sacked like that. Oh. We were getting ready to sack Oli. Didn't sack Didn't Oli. Happen. Sacked. I'll sack a go. Claims Nuno. Claims uh, Nuno. Oh. We, no, already we, Conte. Oh, Conte in already. What He's a done a good speech. Has he? Yeah, um, that, well, a statement rather. Uh, it wasn't a spoken speech, but um, Jim White and Simon Jordan broke it down. And like so, so, some, um, and uh, Jim White's like, oh, this is a great speech. It's passionate. This is exactly what the Spurs are doing. Hello, old cobblers. Simon Jordan goes. <laughs> He's great. Yeah, he said like... um. Like he's got going, the reason I didn't go last time is the moment where he said like, he described it like a relationship. He said, my heart was still too broken by Inter. I weren't ready for a new relationship. I mean, like it literally sounds exactly like that. Like somebody who wasn't ready for a new relationship. Oh, wow. But now I am ready for Spurs. And I was, but, but, but the enthusiasm and passion of Daniel Levy. That says to me that Conte gets over heartbreak in record time. Four months it took him then. Four months. It takes a lot longer than that for me. Maybe me one year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Longer for you? I'm not, I won't get into this. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Right, let's leave Gareth's heartbreak out of this and think about Colton Cole popping a Viagra before training. And like, we will ask him that, won't we? We've got to, haven't we? Colton Cole took a blue pill, believing it to be a vitamin, before training, only to discover the truth mid-session. He has comically recalled how he had three legs during a training session as he had a shock after being pranked by his teammates. Now, what I will say is having t taken in the past uh, uh, erectile dysfunction medication, yeah. although I don't like describing myself as having erectile dysfunction, <laughs> even just then I'd hated saying well, None that. of us would, no. It's embarrassing. But they, they really, um, they're really going to town on the old adverts. You know, they, they pop up a lot, excuse the pun. Don't be dirty, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Within football games, obviously, they're featured a lot on BT. I've seen them loads on BT. What's the advert like? I think it's for something called New Man, which I think suggests new man. I mean, it's spelled N-U-M-A-N, but I think the well, suggestion yeah, suggest is that, that you're a new man. But how does the advert go? It What's the images? things like... Uh, it's, it's so dreadful. Is it a disgruntled man looking down his trousers like, you again? It's just a series of words on the screen, <laughs> and it just says things like, don't feel like a man need change in your life and it's really it's almost got the kind of you know the guy used to the introduction to x factor it almost sounds like a bit like him it's it's not him but there's almost a kind of like slightly comical side to it i don't want to be hectored you feel about like lethargic you're, penis. you're being told you're awful if anything like this has happened to you and look it, at this thing <laughs> what are you going to do with the your baby makers no good it's like it's made out of blamanche you need new man <laughs> stiff as a rake handle like that's no way it's to approach off, the, the situation of love. No. But what I will say about, and I will ask Colton this. We've got to. In my experience of having taken Viagra or even that one that lasts longer, the, these are the problems: headache, mm. red cheeks, 
And like, so you like, so headache. You don't really want to have sex because of the headache. Red cheeks, you're like a little engine driver. <laughs> boop, boop. <laughs> right. And the other problem it's is not doing the tunnel jokes. No, well done for spotting that they were there. <laughs> um, but the 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 S, of course, formidable erection. But uh, you do still need... I'd always like you to address me like that. <laughs> now, yes, of course, formidable erection. But you have to... It has to be encouraged. Sorry? <laughs> well, it won't just go oh, on see. its own. You no. have to... There has to be some interactive component. Of course. Yeah, even if it's self-induced, you can't just leave it down there and it on its yeah. own. So what you're suggesting to me... Carl and Carl got around. Turned on during training. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You still turn me on. You can make me hard again. Bit, yeah. bit blue, bit cheeky, bit, bit cheeky. saucy, it's all okay. of this. It's a podcast. But it's, it's, a podcast. it's a podcast. There's no censorship laws here. No. Um, so, Although we are marked down as clean on iTunes, which... Uh, Jenny mm. insists it's fine. I'm actually clean well, from drugs. It has clean been clean the last few times. <laughs> I'm clean from drugs, but I don't really talk about it. So it's actually appropriate way to uh, subscribe me. All right, so um, what, what else we can ask him? We'll go in, hu- we'll go in with the erection. First Did question. You, we'll go in hard, were you going to say? Yes, right, sorry. Okay. Um, and, uh, but, and then, like, look, these are some simple facts. Cole accepted the offer to play in Indonesia as it was close to Malaysia and his wife, Sophia, who had returned to live there in Kuala Lumpur. Jen, these are cotton pasted from wikipedia aren't they yeah the internet (laughs) though i do change the sentences around well done i mean you wouldn't expect jen to call colton in advance no but i also think that's probably not the thing to start with no that's not the top thing on the the page let's just pick that up i'm not i'm not (laughs) didn't start with that (laughs) in december cole rejoined west ham to work with the club's academy players and provided Mm. support to jack collison and mark phillips his chant, sung to the tune of Spandau Ballet's 1983 hit, Gold. Carlton, Cole, Cole, always believe in your soul, you're indestructible. Always believe it, Carlton, Cole. And I'm just thinking, you know how chants, they're, they're, they're in a loop, really, chants? Yeah. That's the thing, you can't go too long. Sure. In a chart. Well, <laughs> depends. I, I just did. <laughs> All right. All right. So look. I was making another Viagra pun. Oh, I see. Well done. So, <laughs> sorry, I must get stopped. You mad old <laughs> retired general perched in your leather chair <laughs> looking for a b- erection jokes all the live long day. All right. That's Carl Cole. But have you got anything to add? Because we've not really written any questions. So we, Carl Cole's going to come in here in good faith and we're just going to go, Carlton, did you get an <laughs> erection? Did you get turned on? By whom was it that got yeah. you going? What else have we got? I mean, the thing with Carlton Cole for me, like, obviously, I don't know, how, where does he sit in the kind of uh, legends of West Ham? Like, he, maybe not, I mean, obviously, we wouldn't say this to him, but, like, he's not quite up there in, he doesn't have the status of a lot of, the, of some of your absolute People sort faves. of, like, I guess, do you know what you'd call him? Cult hero. Cult hero. You know? Like, because, yeah, he's, like, in a sense, the West Ham's hierarchy of heroes, I would say, are kind of you know obviously there's like Bobby Moore, Peters, yeah. Hurst, yeah. Brooking, you know, and then I feel like people like yeah like it's Devonshire, mm. Maca- Maca- like but Benny. then now it might be starting to get personal because it's the time when I'm engaging yeah. like Macaveni, but definitely De Canio, De Canio. Yeah. you know like yeah so like I think it's weird to, to like maybe over the last ten to fifteen years he's probably up there isn't he with some of the most loved West Ham yeah. players. And yeah. I, I get the feeling people warm to him a lot as well. Like I he seems like a really funny, loved. nice bloke. I saw this uh, fact here that he was charged by the FA in response to a Tottenham fan taunting him on Twitter by asking whether he would consider retirement. And he replied on Twitter, F off you see. <laughs> 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 After admitting the offence, he was fined 20 grand. Cool, that's heavy. I know. But it kind of fits in with my idea of him. Like he's... I, I imagine this is how we're going to take him, you know, soon, is that he's, like, he's uh, like affable and, like, relatable and funny. So uh, I hope so, Gareth. Not if your line of questioning is I'm pursued. Not. You're a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be I your focus. I the criminal bit out. Huh? You cut that out? Well, yeah, I didn't. You think cut it out of your Wikipedia well research. Done, it was actually three sources I looked at. God, well, there's actually three sources. Jim's really proud. So what we're going to ask him about, we're going to ask him about Viagra. We're going to ask him about, like, working at West Ham now and, t- and like, teaching the kids. Yep. Well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? We can talk to him about maybe, like, a little bit about 
some of the best strikers he's played with because he's played with like some amazing players like all those Chelsea all right. ones so maybe some of that might are be good are you making notes about. of this hold on <laughs> Viagra kids <laughs> Christ Kuala Lumpur uh <clears throat> Chelsea strikers or just strikers but in general. Don't assume that the best ones will be Chelsea. <laughs> best strikers. All right. This is good. We're doing this properly, All Gal. Right, great. Um, you know, he went to Celtic for a bit, didn't he? That, I think that was a really big deal for him at the time, like going to Celtic. Oh, yeah. so, All well, right. Celtic. Give us a sign at 15 minutes as well, Jengo, like when we're 15 minutes into the video or at the, okay. the interview. Will ya? Yeah. Be professional, Jen. Oh, Be well. much more professional. You get more professional every week. He played, played for England. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right, okay, but look, listen, we're going to be doing our breakdowns. We've asked that that's a great interview we got there with Carl and Cole. Yeah. A real good one. We're prepped. <laughs> okay, and like, uh, here, look, question of the week. Ryan Reynolds, who we called up on the show, by the way, never got back to me, <laughs> uh, and Rob McKennell, he, were in the stands watching, that's how his name sounds, sadly, watching Wrexham last week. Which famous people have you spoiled at games and did you meet them? Edwin on YouTube said, I met... <laughs> <laughs> I met Neil Buchanan from Art Attack at Elland Road. That's the level we're operating at. Well done, Neil Buchanan. Like No one will remember that, but he was good. I, I asked for an autograph him. and he said yes. He passed me a ceramic owl he was holding. <laughs> this is amazing. It's incredible. Which I held while he signed the back of my shirt. No idea why he took it to the game. <laughs> I saw Neil Buchanan with a ceramic owl at Elland Road. That's beautiful. That's wonderful. What a weird thing to have said. I wonder happened. whether it was all part of an art attack. This is art. That's yeah. situationism. Neil Buchanan, like whilst he talked about sort of rather pedestrian art techniques on his show, Art Attack, like, you know, this is look at the use of colour. In real life, he was like a Dadaist yeah. turning up with a porcelain <laughs> owl at Ellen Road. So like this, it would be good if Edwin continued. When I walked away, I thought, what is wisdom really? Is it as fragile as porcelain? What is art? Is football art? Is life art? What is the point in art when we're all going to die? And then Neil Buchanan sort of burst out of a cover. Because that's an art attack. Yes, yeah, an art attack, Sonny Jim. <laughs> then ironically and sadly, I had a heart attack yeah. and died. I'm actually writing this from another dimension right now. Yours is silly, Edwin, YouTube. Thanks, Edwin. Good. That's good, that Edwin. You've helped us there with that content. Uh, I, Odin... He was a big fan of the old pullout, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. Like a sh when I think of Neil Buchanan, I see him shot from above yeah. on a jib. <laughs> Everything was. You'd start, the whole premise of Art Attack seemed to be that you go, well, this is rubbish. Yeah, it's still rubbish. This is still rubbish. Oh, it's brilliant! He pulled right out. Yeah, that was what happened every time. Neil Buchanan was the master of the pullout, but was Colton Cole? <laughs> we'll find <laughs> out. Um, hold on a second. Hold on a second. What about those bits of art that Japan uh, uh, monks make with uh, bits of sand to talk about the temporal nature of oh, everything? And water. They do it with water? They do it with water. How? Um, they put a lot... <laughs> They put a load of liquid on the street and then they make an amazing piece of art and then Ugh. then it just evaporates. That's life, baby. But the sand and rice ones are better, aren't they? I don't know. All those mandalas, very delicate, very fragile, and then you sweep it away. <laughs> don't you realise that? Do you sometimes when you get a thing think, when will this thing be gone? Yeah. I when? try I try <laughs> <laughs> When do you think it? <laughs> I try and practice that with almost everything I buy now and it works you with this. About this. When will this be gone? Your new Hulsh top. That, <laughs> did I get you that? Or no, Hull give you it because you're, you're the ambassador of Hull now, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. When are you going to fortify uh, that relationship? To be honest, they haven't got in touch. Oh, come on, I'll ring them. I'll bloody well <laughs> ring Hull. Because I got so excited by the initial email that Jade received and then, uh, and then I replied. Mm. I, I think the, potentially the mistake is I think Jade maybe sent back the email that I'd sent to her which said something like, yeah, I'll talk to those fellas. And maybe they felt like... That's a terrible discretion. That's, indis that's foolish. Come on, let's me and you right. email them together okay. passionately. Yeah, maybe we could leave them a voice note or something. Well, I'm good at those. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. Let me just check the old memory banks to see if that's ever destroyed any lives. <laughs> nope, it's all fine. Um, so when you get a thing, you do think about its I'm obsolescence to... and its transience. I think almost the first thing I try to think now is, don't, is first of all, don't get too excited by this. Right. It's just a thing. Um, and therefore it stops me getting all, all giddy, although I, I didn't practice that when I got this. Um, and secondly, if something breaks, I think, again, you know that initial thing of something breaks or gets marked or gets ruined? Do I? I've got a three-year-old and a four-year-old. Everything I wear is yeah. destroyed. There's no point trying to look nice. They'll sick on it. They'll spit on it. They'll pit poo or pee on it. Yeah. They don't care about. They don't really care about us. <laughs> <laughs> like and like, so. And in um, that moment, you do have to think it's just a it's thing. Transient. Isn't it? it was always going to go. 
I remember I started doing this, trying to think this way, when I was a bit younger. And I would like, I remember this lad asked, he said, I like those sunglasses. And they were my favourite sunglasses. I gave him them sunglasses. You were there, actually, Gal. Yeah. We were on a beach somewhere. <clears throat> I remember that. I still regret it. <laughs> <laughs> they were great sunglasses. I, I didn't think that's where you were going with this. <laughs> I miss them. I'd do anything. I, if I could hunt that lad down and kill him like a dog <laughs> and get those sunglasses back, I'd do it. Because, no, no, the real answer is, those sunglasses, I would have lost them by now anyway. Yeah. I lose everything. Okay, in fact, I give away sunglasses quite a lot. If someone gives you a compliment on a thing, if you can give them it, you should give them it. Yeah. Also, what about clothes when you think, oh, this this item of clothing's brilliant and I never want to lose it or ruin it or anything. Yeah. And then it gets to the following year and you go, why did I ever wear that? Like, I look terrible. What about trainers? A lovely pair of trainers <laughs> and someone steps in for, no shoes, no shoes, <laughs> no shoes. What, what do you think of all this, Jen? I like buying nice things. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think about their transients? You know, my, yeah, but you know, like my sunglasses, I won't let you try on. Yeah, give me them. I love them. I make sure they're all looked Don't say that stuff. my head will stretch them. <laughs> I think it, they, it might. Do you think I have a wide head? <laughs> Slightly bigger than mine. I think it's rather narrow, like a Tic Tac. <laughs> no, your, your whole now. face There's is, mirror, is yeah. kind of long and narrow, but I think if you were to measure my eyes. Your head. Yeah, well, remember eye. your eyes are <laughs> together. Your eyes is like a number eight. I hate my eyes. It's, I'm not I can't change them. <laughs> like, what it is, it's like the number eight. You know, like the number eight, it's just like in the middle bit where it crosses over. Whoop, infinity symbol. That's yeah. your eyes, Jen. I don't like them. In your eyes. Someone paid me a compliment, though, this week. Your eyes obviously like each other because they can't no. wait to get next to each other. <laughs> It's like they're trying to have one eyeball. This is because I won't let you try on my glasses. I call you the, I call you the semi-cyclops. <laughs> it's like you're trying to... Be, uh, if you have kids, it'll be a cyclops. Because it's like that's what's happening. It's trying to evolve into one eye. Yeah, but it would, you'd, I'd have to just have kids with a wide-set eye person. That's a good idea. But who will have you? <laughs> oh, well, someone with wide-set eyes, Jen, they'll run a mile. Well, Unless their eyes are pointing so far wide that they can't see anything <laughs> in front of them. Exactly. They can just see their periphery vision like a bee. Yeah. You should marry a bee. No. This is good. I'm enjoying this riff. No. People are going to complain that's, about it. Well, they're saying, oh, that's a bit out of order. You said Bullion. that, yeah. Jen. Yeah. No, I love her. All the people with eyes too close together. It's, oh, um. My eyes are too close together. <laughs> that offended. tennis player has his eyes too close together. Oh, I'm not getting into the this. Re the really good tennis player. The one that went. Djokovic. Went, yeah, his eyes are yeah. really close Ivan together. Ivan Lendl. <laughs> So he's, maybe he's maybe we could be good at judging speed. He's got a wife, Jen. I'll thank you for not trying <laughs> yeah. to track down Djokovic. I don't want, I Leave told you. Djokovic oh, out no. of this. I need a wide set eyed person. Yeah. Jen. If you go with another person <laughs> whose eyes are close together, you just baby will be an eye. It'll be like that thing from Monsters Inc. <laughs> like Billy Crystal voices. Your, your baby will be an eye. <laughs> and that is no fun, let me tell you. All right, now. Where's Carlton Cole? He hasn't arrived. <laughs> Carlton Cole! Maybe he's forgotten. Oh, it's a neat text from him here. Yeah? F off, you see. <laughs> I guess he's not coming. <laughs> no, he's coming. He'll be here, Carlton Cole. <laughs> Lolden Timber on Instagram said, in question, in response to question of the week, what famous people you've seen, said, I sat next to Jeff Erst at breakfast in the old West Ham Hotel before a game, got an autograph to Liam. My dad moaned that I should have got it to address to a more common name so we could sell it. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad. But I still got it to this day. Oh, mate, that's so lovely. <laughs> we could sell, we could have sold it's, that. If it said to Dave or something. You could sell that to anyone called Dave. Massive market. <laughs> Liam, look at this. Look at the statistics. What a cynical response <laughs> to a magical moment of running into Jeff Erst. I love it. So we could have sold that. Anyone called Dave? Tom Ratcliffe, 92. All right, Tom. He says, I saw Russell Brand at Upton Park, but he was singing Billy Joel, so I didn't go and say hello. That was my, on when we used to do Radio 2, I wanted to start a charm. Ill-advised, that was. Massive mistake. <laughs> but one person one time did come up to me and go, uh, hey, Russell, uh, Upton Park, Willie Amos. <laughs> it was the wrong idea. I should never, I'll stay out of that. I don't have it. I don't have the gift of songwriting. Yeah, I think the or important part of that conceiving. was one person's come up to you. <laughs> Well, he emerged from a crowd of other people that were hurling bottles. <laughs> uh, I saw Jim Davidson, says Tremendous. No, I'm not sure we should read this one. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you guys? Looking confused, hanging about at a roundabout. <laughs> he could have been a bit pissed. Yep. Hold on. After We don't know that, Tremendous, after watching Charlton White Bournemouth. I once, Theo Humphreys on Instagram, I once met Grant Mitchell and Beppe. <laughs> not a football match. But this, like, <laughs> it's not even the premise. Don't, we're talking about out football games, guys. David W. Peckham. Jar I met Jarvis Cocker at Hillsborough in the 90s. He was almost too tall. <laughs> 
He was almost too tall for me to see. What do what, you mean? What, yeah, all of, was a all, weird all comment. of him. He's Phrase. in the distance. No, like probably see over him to see the game. That's oh, I see. Oh, yeah, see I know. I thought like, Jarvis Cocker was so tall yeah. that it was like he was the end of him was in the distance yeah. and you couldn't you, make it out. But you'd be able to see some of him though, wouldn't you? Even if he was tall. Like you'd say, I only saw up to his knees or something. Even if he's as tall as like, you can see the top of the Empire State Building from the floor. <laughs> Can't you? <laughs> like you stand at the floor. I don't look know. Up, Let's uh, try. <laughs> Group trip. <laughs> Live from New York City. <laughs> Football is nice. We're standing at the bottom of the Empire State Building now. Look, oh, there's Godzilla. No, King Kong. Climbing his way up. And yep, we can see he's at the top. He's yep. got that lady. Carlton's in the waiting room. <gasps> we'll let him in. Let him in, let him in, let the him in. The energy on the show today. It's high. It's, it's really high. It's high as kites. Buzzing. And Russell's got breakfast just Bring at the Carl perfect Carl. time. Carlton Cole. The perfect Carlton time. Carlton Cole. Can you hear us, Carlton? Yes. Yes, Carlton. <laughs> oh. How you doing, mate? Can All you hear right, me? mate. Yeah, we can hear you. Get him as the central okay. image, Jen. <laughs> All right, Carlton. <laughs> Carlton. Yes. What's up, Russ? That's my doing, geese? Yeah, good, mate. Good. That's my mate. That's my mate, Gareth. He's a whole fan. All right, Carlton. Oh, he's a whole fan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, <I know>. mate. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> There's Thank nothing you. quite like being a whole fan. The glory of it. I know, I know, I know. I don't, I've never, I don't ever think I've met a whole fan before. I'm not sure. Have I met a whole fan? Is there anything you've ever wanted I've to never, ask I've a whole fan? I've never met a whole fan before. This, <laughs> is, this is actually, yes. this is actually like opening a Christmas present. Like, I've never yes. met a whole fan. Thanks, Carlton. <laughs> what have you like? Like they're, they're a curious specimen, Carlton. You, they you, are. Yeah. They are. <laughs> don't get onto the subject of Dean Windass because there'll be tears, there'll be emotions. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gets what a legend control. he is, though. He's yes, a legend, he is. A yes, he is. Uh, he's a proper legend, oh. to be honest. So I knew I'd like you, Carlton. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. <laughs> and I like Alex Bruce as well. Right. And I like Steve Bruce. Yes. Yeah, yeah. As so. do I. Oh, you two are going to get on fine because like <laughs> Gareth talks about Steve Bruce all the time, like he. In considerable depth yeah. like he really cares a lot about steve i do Bruce. i do i saw a lovely picture yeah. of alex and steve at the cricket this week and it made me feel oh was it yeah because obviously all the stuff that's happened to steve bruce recently it was nice yeah, to see a picture been, of them and they were both smiling at the yeah. cricket and alex bruce said oh, what, yeah, yeah. what a wonderful day and i thought oh that's good <laughs> that's <laughs> nice. lovely at least they're in good spirits. Exactly. Carl, and I love you. Now, so <laughs> that, that, that will help, you know, not that you need help to relax, but just so you know, I love you. <laughs> now, um, I love you too, Russ. Thanks, man. Thank you very much, mate. Oh, God, look at this. What a lovely moment. Well, we've got, we've prepared some questions <laughs> uh, in advance. We talked about what to ask you. What about when you took that Viagra? <laughs> But training. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How did it yeah, happen? The Jermaine Defoe. Yeah, oh, Jermaine Defoe. Defoe yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Basically, he tricked me. He tricked me. Um, <laughs> I thought I was taking a supplement, and it wasn't. It was. It was sort of was because what it, it was, was. It was as uh, kind of because it was uh, advancing one aspect. But this is. But did it actually take effect? Because in yeah. my experience, um, back in the day, back in the day, because I, I, I think the ones. They just used to give you a hard on straight away, didn't they? The ones. <laughs> now, now, now they they kind of work with your feelings a little bit, didn't it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> they work with your feelings. They've, they've refined Why it. Why couldn't you have said that? That I is it. Done. They work with your feelings. Yeah, that's a good way of saying it. I didn't realise that's what it was because I was trying to explain it. I was saying, Colton, like, hold on though, if it actually went into effect, like that must have meant that Colton was at some point aroused, like during training, and I was speculating as to which player or what moment it was that did it. But uh, the the earlier form uh, of Viagra packed remember, a punch. It wasn't. It wasn't. It was. A, it wasn't a full on. It was a semi. It just was a, a semi. semi. It's just a lob on. Yeah. It's just a lob on in training. <laughs> uh, that, this is this is good this is probably the best content we've ever made yeah it you. is thank you for uh like thank you for participating in that all right now like, no problem i, I got, got right i was gonna the next question was going to be about training the kids but i want to create a little bit of a gap <laughs> between the erection <laughs> and training children because i'm a professional broadcaster so let's talk for a moment where who was do you, like, you are a much beloved West Ham hero. You've got one of the best chants, Cole and Cole. Cole, always believe in your soul. Uh, who did you play with that you most, uh, that you thought was the best player and who did you like most? Um, Who did I think was the best player? Yeah, and you can include Chelsea. Um, 
but not that that should oh, make uh, a difference. Oh, in, in, my, in my career? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About. So, yeah, yeah. So, Zola. Zola definitely... Um, right. Right in that although, down. yeah, he didn't play for West Ham. Um, oh, no, no, no. I had... I, I was... When I first broke into the team at um, Chelsea, he was there. What was that he, like? You watch him in that? He, was it beautiful? Beautiful. Beautiful. And you can see to this, to this day the imprint that Maradona left on him. Do you know what I mean? No like, way. You can see... Yeah, you can see Maradona left a couple of things on him. Like he told, <laughs> he, he, he told us a story that um, how he used to watch him like every day and used to just um, think he was just class, obviously. Mm. And um, and his style of play, Maradona used to train with him and just like help him through because he was a young Zola back then. And uh, Maradona used to help him through. And, um, and his qualities as in loving the game, loving the game so much that um, nothing else matters and um, Zola said that he took that with him and so he was trying to take the, put that onto the youngsters at Chelsea when we were younger coming through and when I got there he was like the first one to that kind of helped me um, settle in him and um, John Terry to be fair and um, really? yeah so when he actually came to West Ham I knew I was going to be comfortable with him straight away because I knew what type of person he is and uh, a kind heart hearted person and um, just wanted me to love the game as much as him. And that's what, that's why I've done so well underneath him when he, when he was um, our, our, um, our manager. But at the same time, we also had Steve Clark. You can't take the, the gloss off of Steve Clark. Steve Clark, Clark had the, the tactical nous. Um, Zola was quite fairly a, a new manager and he kind of um, needed that help where um, he needed um, Steve Clark around him. But at the same time, I should say, he still had his own deals. Uh, so, his own ideas. Yeah. Um, he still wanted to implement his own style, and um, I, I think sometimes him and um, his old friend Steve Clark came to loggerheads on the style of play that he wanted. Um, not style of play, but probably team selection and all that sort of stuff. Oh, but um, yeah, yeah. It, it didn't work out for him at West Ham as much as I wanted it to, for him to work out. And at the end of the day, we got in Avram Grant. Um, at the back end of his, his um, tenure and it, that didn't really work out so it was quite a big mistake to let him go yeah that was a weird moment I remember that uh, Colton it's lovely when you talk about uh, like how things like kindness and love impact you when you're playing yeah. whether like like is that when you're playing under a manager what is it that reaches you most is it you I suppose you can only really speak for yourself is it like managers that are feel like they're fierce or or is it like, yeah. or is it love, or is there got to be some sort of combination? Um, yeah, there's got to be a sort of uh, combination. You can't just be um, told that you're the greatest all the time, and you're this, you're, you're, you're. No, there's no one that can touch you. You do need some stern loving sometimes. I don't care who you are. I think in life you need the the rough and the smooth. But depending on who you are um, and what type of player you are, I'm talking in football context here. Um, some people need the love more than others. So, you know, you need to, like, I was one of those guys. I needed um, an arm around me. I needed someone to tell me, uh, you're, you're, the, you're the man, you're, you're going to go out there, you're going to destroy that the defender today. Um, and then if it didn't happen, then I'll probably need some tough love because maybe that I'm, I'm actually not doing what I'm supposed to do on the field and I'm, I'm believing in my height. So you need to get brought back down to earth a little bit. Um, so there's a balance on man management and um, I think both ways work. It just depends which player it is. I was more of the loving character um, and then you had someone like probably Mark Noble that probably didn't need that. He just needed just to be told what to do, um, didn't need an arm around him. And then you had some players that just needed a rocket um, up their ass and then try and... Um, <laughs> be. They had to be told what to do and if it didn't happen straight away, then... Sometimes you'd have to withdraw them from the pitch as well. Um, mm. So I've learned um, a different array of styles of um, coaching across the board um, with different managers and different coaches across my career. And now, because I'm coaching the West Ham under-16s, I am kind of picking and choosing which styles I want to try and implement on a different character. Because all the all, look, we're not all the same. Um, we're, 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 we've all got different feelings, how we react to certain things. And that's what I've learned now, um, how to try and um, adapt to different different players' personalities. And, and I think it's really important that you have empathy and understanding to, to be a top manager or else if you're just um, 
whipping whipping the lash on these boys all the time. Some of them are not going to react in the way um, that you want them to react or because you feel that that's the way I got the best out of myself. That should happen for that guy. Um, and this player, it doesn't work like that. You've got to be able to be um, in and out and try and help each other as much as possible and and, and try and have some empathy um, and, have, and, and have the stern love as well. But at the same time, some people just um, react different. And I, I really hope that a lot of managers take this on board because um, there's a few managers I see now, they just can't adapt. They can't adapt to, to um, the different styles of coaching or the different styles of getting the best out of players. And then they're becoming dinosaurs. And uh, the best managers, are pro- probably the best managers I look at, are probably like, see, like I just, I said, Steve Bruce, he can galvanise his team. Sam Allardyce can galvanise. They're the old school lot. You, now you've got Brendan Rodgers that are doing that. Pep Guardiola is the best day at the moment. Um, but Mourinho, you can see what's happened with Mourinho. Mm. Um, he needed men. He needed men in his team. Um, he couldn't. He didn't have time for the arm around and, and, mm. and nurturing these boys to to feel good. They don't have time for that no more. Um, and these boys need it nowadays more than other um, our generation because Why? I feel I feel because. Um, I feel because things are a bit more sensitive at the moment. People have got more empathy towards each other. People have got um, a different outlook to what it was 10, 15 years ago. And when it was a bit more, the game, the sport was a little bit, yeah, you're butch, you're hard. <laughs> you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you can't right, we're weakness. taking Viagra. <laughs> we're going out there training. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's basically that. <laughs> but, um, and, but, but people are a bit more sensitive nowadays, and you've got to be able to work with the, these these kids. Um, you got Colton, to be able Colton, to like Colton. understand them, mate. I got a bunch of questions, and, and I wanted you to do some questions as well, Cal. But I was going to say, yeah. like that sensitivity must always have been there, but maybe wasn't able to be communicated, and now maybe like the yeah. sensitivity would have been there, in it, mate? But people couldn't talk yeah. about it. Now it's talked about a bit more. You there with like looking after these sixteen-year-olds. How do you uh, handle that level of sensitivity, right? And also, how do you create cohesion of a whole team of players while it also acknowledging that there might be standout individuals? Because like being at a club like West Ham, there's always the you must continually be looking at. Oh, this one, this one's gonna make it. Like yeah. this is someone who's yeah. special. So how do you manage like if someone's special and unique among uh, while yeah. keeping team cohesion? Well, it's not just you as a coach. You got you got you got a, you got a whole team. You got the, the, the. I work with a guy called Loris um, Coggins, top top coach. Um, then we've got another guy called Kyle Moonrak, and then obviously our academy manager Ricky Martin. Um, but he Ricky Martin is the academy manager, and he trusts us to be nurturing these boys to come into the under eight, go into the in, under eight ins because we've got to prepare them for full time football, yeah. and. Um, so now nah, that's a real big responsibility because you've got to try and you've got to try and um and work with their feelings because you've got to understand some of these boys are at, they go to school I don't know what's happening at school then they they might have like problems there or problems even at home sometimes then they got to come into football and then you've got to work with their attitude and what they're gonna bring so you got to kind of know these boys so you got to understand um how to to adapt to their feelings as well because they're going through a lot because and they've got like their exams coming up they've got a lot lots of pressure um so what mm. i try to do i try to help these boys as much as possible coming from experience like i remember when i was their age i, I remember how people treated me i remember that um sometimes um i would mess up but who how did I, how did people react around me and and and, and how did they help me through that scenario and if they wasn't good then I'd still remember that and I'll say oh well I won't be like these people because I remember how it made me feel back then so that's why you got you got to have the understanding and as I say empathy and uh, me and Ashley Cole talk about this all the time um I don't think he got a lot of empathy in his career (laughs) everyone was always um having a go at him but on the pitch he didn't need it because he was a winner he knew how to win but off the pitch he needed to be a bit more understood so there's a t- there's two things going on there. You have got your football personality and you have got your personality away from the pitch. You know what I mean? It's not two. It's not the same things. So it's it's really weird where people try and merge all of these p- things into one. Because I don't really feel that it's fair. I think you have got to separate mm. the pitch, the footballer, and the person. And but I think a lot of times um, that doesn't get um, done. And and that's what I'm trying to work on to tre- try and be a better person 
a better man that understands the world a little bit and a better person to to, to, to coach these kids. When you talk about that amount of sensitivity, it makes me feel like it's like a disgraceful, like some of the things that happen, like that, because you're dealing with like human beings, like, because obviously as a football fan, you're just dealing with raw emotion, the sort of naked yeah. love of your team or hatred of your team when your team don't do what you want it yeah. to do. And then when you break that down and just think of like that, like, you know, yourself or Ashley Cole, as like, you know, youngsters like the age of M16 are dealing with school, dealing with social pressures, de- you know, you think, oh my God, this you can't, you should just be absolutely loving to everybody. There's no point in business in with no. any kind of like, uh, like, um, like what he dealt with Ashley, like he like was like, he was one of them players that got targeted, wasn't he? Like sort of by media and all stuff, all of the, because yeah. of the transfer and everything. Yeah, that's uh, you've given me some insight on that, Colton. Thank you, mate. What, what, Gal, you got some questions? Well, just off the back of that, it's interesting. I was I wondered what your thoughts were on on Conte coming to to Spurs now, because obviously there's, there's kind of mm. comparisons between Conte and Mourinho in maybe his style, certainly the way in which he's kind of perceived in interviews as as quite. Um, being a bit of a bit ruthless, I suppose you'd call it. Yeah. And w- with yeah. all the things you were saying then, I, I was wondering what do you think about the do chairmen who are appointing these managers, how much thought do you think they put into that side of the game now in that the modern manager seems to need in his armory that ability to be tough but also put an arm around a player? With someone like Conte, do you think that's considered when you make an appointment like that, like Spurs did with Mourinho? Did they consider the fact that <clears throat> it feels like Mourinho's style is outdated now in terms of his ability to galvanise players? Um, do you think that's been considered in in the Conte uh, appointment, and and what do you think? How do you think it'll go? Well, if you look at Conte's um, ability to galvanise players, I, I'd say he's top at doing that. At the same time, he knows how to win, mm. and and the, and the thing about it, um, look, I'm not saying Marino's over the hill or anything like that, but I think he still needs to help himself. Um, and look, and he's a psychologist. I know he's a psychologist. He, he, he's done all of the, those courses. He knows what he's doing. But those, some of the techniques that I see him doing and going to the papers when things are not going his way and not talking to the player direct, that's what I'm thinking. What, what are you doing? You're killing the team's morale. And uh, I don't think Conte is that sort of person. I think Conte will handle, if anything's happening on, in, in the change room, he'll handle it, handle it under the radar. No one needs to know. And I know, listen, so- social media, everyone knows everything nowadays and gets to see everything. But he'll try and monitor that situation. So you're, you're, what you have to realise now, it's not about your ego. It's about um, what's best for the team. And I think m- with Mourinho, he's always been an egotistical guy. He's always taken the pressure on himself rather than putting it on his players. But at the same time, um, his players still have to have a responsibility um, on, on guiding themselves through a bad patch. And I think... At the same time, when you got someone like Antonio, um, Anto- um, um, Conte, Conte coming into the to the fold now, I think he commands a level of respect there. He's won everything, um, and he's he's a stern manager as well. So they'll have to respect him in a different way. Plus, he will be definitely. He's been known for improving players as well. Mm. He's been known for helping players on their way to going to get better and, and going to better clubs even. So he's been known for that. So people will believe in him straight away. And they, he's never been in the papers or, um, or or been in the media slating his players. I've never seen that from him. And that, there's the respect level where the players now are saying, well, you're slating me in the papers, and that's Mar- Mourinho-esque, you're slating me in the papers, and then you want me to come and perform for you. Mm. I'm not going to do it. Do you know what I mean? I've got too much power. I've got an ego too. Do you know what I mean? So um, I think I think Antonio has is going to come in. I'm not going to say he's going to be a massive success. I don't know, but all I can see from what I've from the angle I'm coming from is that he will definitely help that team get professional and take their their job seriously. Because what I see, their team's got bundles of talent, and the some some of them, i.e. Deli Ali, should be playing week in week out in the Premier League. And he doesn't seem like he wants to. And if, he does, if Antonio um, identifies that, he will move him on. Can't just be sitting on his wages and, and, and making the team. He'll go and play, train with the reserve to, away from the first team because so, maybe he's a, he's a bad egg. We don't know what's going on in the changing rooms. So he will identify, what, and identify what's going on and he's strong enough and bold enough to, to get rid of it so he has a team. 
Well, that's cool. That's cool analysis. I, I can't um, not um, ask you what you think about West Ham at the moment, mate. How come it's West Ham have become so good? What has Moyes done? What is it like now that you're around it and you know it? You're a player in that. What's what is that that's happened? Because I was, I'll be on a level. Like when Moyes come on the second time, I was like, "Oh, this is a backwards move." And then we lost the game against Newcastle too. Oh, this is you know typical West Ham fan. <laughs> Everyone was. <yeah. laughs> but then it's like, oh my god! And I like, remember when when Moyes was off with a COVID. I know Alan Irving. When when Moyes yeah, comes yeah. back, it'll fall apart. And then it just yeah, 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 hasn't. Yeah, yeah. Now I love David Moyes and literally dreamt about him last night. Right? <laughs> like so, like what has he done? What is it, mate? He's um he's set a new culture. Um he's set a culture where um just participating is not enough no more. Um what he's doing now is made sure that every player in that squad is valued. So everyone has a has a purpose and everyone feels like they've got a purpose. That's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do. Um even what we're doing with um Mark Noble in his victory lap season. He's, he's coming in. He's not playing every game, but he comes in and we're respecting him. Mm. It's just showing people how to act with class. Wow. And then that that's a buy-in to, to any player because they'll they'll play for that manager. They'll they'll and you can see how we defend. We defend and he's got the structure. Look, look, he's got the structure right. Because David Moyes is for one 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 of his uh, main attributes is defending. Mm. He's the whole defense, he's a defensive. Uh, manager, he's never been a, an expansive manager that goes and 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 creates loads of chances. He defends first, makes sure that he's stable. Then they'll build the attack from there, and um, or depending on who they're playing against, they'll defend first and then counter attack. It depends, but um, he knows that he's got that structure there to build from, and then the once he's knew that he had that structure, and then he's got the players to fit into that because he hasn't gone and spent a fortune, has he? He's gone and got the right players with the right attitude as well, because that's the main thing. You got to, you can't go and get these these boys from um, from other teams that come down and play at West Ham and then think they're the, the they're the dogs bollocks basically, and then don't want to work for the team. If you're not working, you're not playing. So this is what happened with Ben Rama when Ben Rama first come. Mm. He was the star man at Brentford. He's come to us on loan at at the start of it. And I don't think he had bought into the culture of defending first, then you can go and express yourself. I think everyone knows, keep it stern first, then go and express yourself. And that's why you can see someone like Declan Rice is thriving because he knows that he does, he does the defending part well. So now all he had to work on was going forward. And that's what he's doing now. Mm. And he has got he's got so much, and he's got Suchek around him that loves defending. And everybody in that team looks like they're enjoying defending. Wow. <laughs> and then they can start building from that and then you can start getting your rewards. And there's nothing, there's no, there's no substitute for hard work, Russell. Like these lads just know work hard first and then the rewards will come later. And that's what he's been drill, drilling in from drilling in from last season till this season now. And you can see what's happening. Everyone's believing in the process because we got into Europe for Christ's sake, <laughs> like with that structure. And then, like, and, and the thing about it, I think he said something on um, Sky Sports the other day. He said something like, West Ham was always known for being a little bit flaky. So even if we win a goal up, we as fans wouldn't mm. really um, believe that we're going to keep that 1-0 lead. Or if we go 1-0 down, we as fans would be like, we ain't getting back into this game. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's flaky. But sometimes it will, we'll, we'll, we'll do something that isn't out of the is, is actually out of the ordinary and surprise you but now you can say well we've got a structure if we go down one nil down we know that we can still get back into this game so we're not panicking after 15 20 minutes if we're one nil down yeah if if man united are um if you look if you flip it now and you see man united go one nil down you're thinking or well, if ronaldo's not on the pitch they're not coming back do you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> so, so it, it, you we've got a team that believes in the philosophy of what david moyes has brought and that's and that's the secret to it. It's not no secret, but and the team spirit's good. You saw the the Ben Johnson um mm, celebration, celebration the other day. Like everyone was there doing the, yeah. the, 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 the I don't know the Bangra dance or whatever it was. The light bulb dance, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, call yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think it's but, a great. Um, that's a great comparison with Man United. I, th I thought that recently is that when you look like look at a team like West Ham, 
and the yeah. eth- the ethos that they've got in that club and that side at the moment where as you say they're building from the back and then allowing the players to go and express themselves and it's working they're scoring yes. lots of goals they're not just relying on Antonio anymore at all no no and then you compare that to a club like Man United and the budgets between those two sides are there's a massive gulf you know you uh, West Ham buying players from the championship Man United getting Ronaldo back and spending all sorts of you know ludicrous transfer fees and then you think Man United is a team that rely on the front and then just hope the back line works. Mm. And it's mm. and it's not working, or certainly it's inconsistent. You know, you look at United yesterday, again, relying on Ronaldo scoring two goals to, to draw with mm. Atlanta. And I just think that that's the kind of, in these times where you can get quite cynical about Premier League football and about, you know, professional football in, in, in general, I think West Ham are such a good news story at the moment to see yeah. a team that are about structure ethos and and building a team properly with not without spending tons and tons of money that's kind of you want to see that more and more but listen to Carlton it's like it sounds like there's real values behind it that are like sort of proper principles like work hard listen to everyone respect honor we're a team mm, come together yes. like these are things that are relevant in society so people yeah. are very quick to point out negative things in football and use it as a crucible for oh, this is wrong with society and these issues but actually when something's working well it's not oh just money and all these kids care about is dollar it's actually mm. a beautiful sort of story of yeah. people coming together for a common purpose yeah. which is a valuable social message isn't it yeah, well, if you see if you see our ethos at the club, at the academy, even um, hard working, a plus attitude, um, um, exciting football. Um, we've got loads of and, and and the attitude part is the main part for us. How do we approach every day? When you come into the into the training ground, how's your respect levels? Have you have you greeted everyone? Have you have, has everyone acknowledged that you're there? Have you shaken everybody's hands? Well, you can't shake each other's hands now. You you, you fist pumped, didn't you? But um, but the respect values are there at the moment, and um, and 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 not even at the moment. It's always been there, but it's actually been the the light's been shone in it a little bit because of what's going on in the first team. So what's ever going on in the first team, they've got those values, and it trickles down all the way to the academy, wow. and that's why the club's in good stead. And then you see when you're in the academy, that is actually the base. That's the base of any football club. Like you need a good academy because we've got the likes of Declan Rice. You've seen how good a, a nicer guy Declan Rice is. You've seen how nice a guy Ben Johnson is. You've seen how nice a guy, even when um, Jeremy and Gakia came, when he but has gone obviously to Watford. These boys mm. are really nice kids, first and foremost. Mark Noble, you've seen how he is as a person. Uh, most of these boys that are homegrown, they they've got this. Um, They've got, we've got an ethos where they have to have respect first and then everything, hard work, um, and then the rest will look after themselves. Their talent will shine through. But you have to get put the hard work and graft in before you can even get a chance to get into that first team. And we've got some other young boys. I can't wait to show you guys what we've got. We've got some great young kids coming through the ranks at the moment, and everybody's like so happy that, obviously, Ben Johnson's doing so well. Mm-hmm. We just had Danny Chester's. Um, just had a debut in the Europa League last the last time we was out. So we're just showing the world what we're actually are about. And then David Moyes is pioneering that. And then we just follow, we follow through. Colton, I must say, it's so beautiful to hear you talk. You're such a wonderful ambassador for West Ham United and for the sport and for the values that you've been talking about. It's clear that you exemplify them. Suddenly, after many years of knowing the song, the ideas of Colton Cole always believe in your soul, you're indestructible, <laughs> seems like a sincere... <laughs> like, this is oh, how I what? regard you. <laughs> Uh, do you know what? Let's see that song there. Yeah. I love it. So I tell you why because <laughs> it actually it, it actually relates to me. Like I really feel like because look, I've had loads of stuff thrown at me. I could have gone off. I could have gone off the radar. I could have um, gone down the wrong path, especially after your career as well. But you got you know you know in life, yeah. When 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 things are, like things get chucked at you, and you just got to be able to deal with it. And it and I always say now, like it's just how you react to things. Things are always going to come at you. But it's just the way you react, and re- your reaction is going to ca- cause a chain reaction. And if your reaction is not good, that's going to that's going to cause dramas in the future as well for you. So what you got to do is just. I used to be a reactive person. Like I used to just off the cuff. I just like if you've done something to me, I'll just react <laughs> and not think about it. <laughs> where now, where now I'll like take it in, and I'll be like, do you know what? 
I have to figure figure out figure this out properly <laughs> before I react <laughs> and make a fool of myself or affect my, my affect my future. Oh, and I think um, I've as been a trying coach, to do that. Spandau it, ballet oh, it's as difficult. a mantra. It's, oh, it's so difficult. I've been it's trying so it myself, difficult. you know, like that, because that's what I have. Like, I feel emotions very strongly, you know what I mean? So like, yeah. if someone says something to me, or affect, like, I'm like, ah! Like, then it's all like, yeah, problems yeah. I, come. I was the same. I was mm. the same. Like, and, and that's why when that, when that song always, that song hits me because it says, you're indestructible. You got <laughs> the power to know. Like, so I've got, I'm taking my power back instead of giving my it. power to people. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm at the stage I'm at. I'm, I'm actually believing everything happens for a reason, Russell. You should know that. Everything happens for a reason. It's just how you react to that and and, and to make it a reason worth living for. Oh, God, I actually really, really intensely love you now. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. That was so amazing. I hope you'll come on this show again, will you? And I'll stay in touch. I'd, I'd, I'd really Yeah, no problem. You Whatever more. you want me, let me know, man. Let Thank me know. Thank you. Also, um, what, what you could do for me... Yes, yeah? the answer is yes. We're, we're doing, West Ham, West, West Ham, West Ham How many Viagra do you need me to take? <laughs> <laughs> Not more. West, West Ham are doing a show on the 16th. Yeah. If you can make it, um, what do you mean West Ham are doing want... a show? What's this now? We're doing that. We've <laughs> got our own. Match. We've, got, we've got our own TV show now. We've All got right. our own little TV show. Jesus. And they um they asked me to. I said I was working with you today, and they said, oh, can you ask him if he would love to come on the show?" I and will I was love like, to. Cause we're, yeah, because um we're I'll trying to we're trying to expand. You've we're trying brought, to expand I'll now. into the values. You've got me with the values. Yeah, yeah. I'll be there with an A plus attitude. I'll be fist bumping <laughs> ever. I'll make sure I've said hello to everybody. Oh, my feet will be clean. I'll be don't have to do all of that. I'll clean no, someone's no, boots. No. <laughs> Carlton, for, for no, balance, no, be, for balance do you want a whole play. city fan as well? <laughs> um, not really. No, <laughs> not so not provide balance. It's got Jared Bowen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can talk to Jared all night. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. Yes, I will do that thing. That's a hard. Hard, hard yes for me on West Ham yeah. TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah because really um, yeah, we're trying to get we're, we're trying to get like obviously yourself. Um, Ray Winston's coming on board as well, so we're trying to get people like yourself um, um, to, to to pioneer our name in a different way because we need to reach out because what we're doing we're You're doing actually a, a lot running of West Ham now. <laughs> the new Amazon. No, do you know what I've been I've been working hard, Russ. I'm not going to lie to you. So um, I'm part of that the growth of the brand. Of yeah, West yeah, Ham I'll help now. you. So, I'll help you. You tell me yeah, what you need. So we're trying we're trying to we're trying to get out there. We're trying to be massive. That's you got it. You already are be always massive. believe in your soul. You're indestructible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna um, I'm gonna uh, will you send Colton my details, please? Whoever was dealing like make sure you got everything, and all the personal stuff, and then all you right, can then, reach yeah, out perfect. on the planet. Thank you, mate. Right. Colin, thanks for Cheers, coming mate. on and lighting us up. Thanks for having me. Lots nice of to love. Meet you, Colin. Thank you, Colin. Thank you. Nice See to you. meet you. Bye, mate. Bye. Bye, mate. Oh, wow. Well, that, was, that was intense. It was intense. I actually nearly cried at one I know, bit. I could tell. It got emotional. When he said the thing about, that, that song, that speaks to me, that. like, <laughs> I like how he, t he talks beautifully, doesn't he? He's he got really, really sort of he's got well, incredible he's, yes, sincerity. He's uh, authentic, isn't he? He's really, yeah, really relatable. I like people... Because it's when people... Sorry, carry on. Well, the, when it's working class rhythms and language, yes, but there's but an conveying articulate... Them, an emotion. Mm. That they're able to um, convey emotion. In a, in a way that's like as I say kind of relatable it's yeah it's so lovely especially I know it sounds weird to say this but like when men do it even more it's like it's, it's a <laughs> <laughs> and, and football it's a little about what he was saying at the start of f the culture is different now men have changed an awful lot and now obviously I don't want to get all sorts some of breakfast difficult to calm territory down. here yeah, why are you wandering into this we talk about Spandau Ballet a minute ago but you wouldn't have got a footballer talking like that 20 years ago that, I think that's the thing that I mean. Is that, so when you hear something like that from from someone who's been in that culture, and we've all been to football matches, they're bloody terrifying. I'm absolutely, I'm still get terrified going to football matches. Terrifying experience. Yeah. My so when you hear that kind of thing, it's it's lovely. Which when he said that he feels down, like because you know that Colin Cole had a bit of an up and down career. Yeah. Um, excuse me, eating <clears throat> my breakfast to arrive. God. One of the things, what I felt was, is like, I imagined him feeling a bit down or whatever and then hearing the Carl and Carl yeah. you're indestructible always believe it and they go yeah, yeah actually I will always believe it I think it must be great to uh, to have a song like that oh, a chant a like one. that and, and, and it be one that you like because there must be loads that people don't really like that much but that one's such a good one 
<laughs> or it may be a derivative one. Sorry, sorry. Free, Should that? Breakfast. What What do we do about the old breakfast? Because <laughs> we get we're getting complaints now. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Carl, Carl wouldn't have that in the under sixteens, would no, he? No, eating your breakfast on the pitch. No, when you're meant to be doing like, round the cones or They're all about two respect against us one. At West Ham. It's disrespectful. The new it's brand, not the West Ham way. <laughs> the new brand West Ham, should we say? I was. I can't believe that when Carl Cole started <laughs> announcing he was running a TV channel. What is this? What's got? What kind of it's like Jeff Bezos? <laughs> yeah. Amazon. Yeah. Ah. Uh, yeah. Did you go. already do that? No, I just said Amazon. That's yeah. Yeah. that's right. Well Amazon. Done. All right. Amazon. It's great. It's really I, good. I own it and all its subsidiary rights. <laughs> um, Say that on the night of that night that you're oh, definitely yeah. going Shit, to. The sixth night. That you're I've definitely got going to. Because do you think my feeling that I've got now is going to go? Yep. <laughs> 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 like, oh, I'll definitely be there. I'll be there 100%. I'll definitely be there. Hey, it's that time now. Yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all those feelings I had, they was, they've gone. <laughs> they went away. Car's here, Russ. you got to get Carl and Carl. <laughs> Unless that car is Carl to Carl. Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not getting in it. Or on it. <laughs> oh, man. You're right. 16th. I didn't even ask what is the 16th of. No. It's going to be November. That's the nearest 16th That's that soon. there is. That's soon. That's so soon. What if... And where will it be? And Ray Winston's there. Oh, That's no. going to be nerve-wracking. Of course it is. I've met Ray a couple of times. He He's was in intense. my story at the club. Uh, here's my thing then. Like, you know, we were asked you, what famous people have you seen at a football club? I see Ray Winston at yeah. a football club. It was West Ham. And it was against Sunderland, right? And all... I've told you this before, mate. Like, it was in a box, Ray. I was with you. Do you remember, right? I was there. We were there. Yeah. Well, do you remember, like, all of the, like, this is what my main memory is. It's all the Sunderland fans he was with, like, wearing wool knitwear right. sweaters and shell suit bottoms. <laughs> I was like, who's Ray hanging out with? Yeah. <laughs> like, it was it was like, a... They were like actual Sunderland fans. It was not, like, it, to, it's to his credit, you know? Like, why should he be with all VIP people from yeah. Sunderland? It was an interesting entourage. As if such a thing could exist. That <laughs> <laughs> was a joke. Joking. That was a joke. I love. Sunderland, I love everyone. And that's what I learned from Carlton Cole. Always yeah. believe in your soul, you're indestructible. <laughs> oh, that was amazing. Blimey, that was lovely. Actually, as well, when he, I said, why is it working at West Ham? I actually now understand it better. Absolutely. But, um, and what he said about Conti. Yep. Understood that better. And yeah. what he said about Mourinho. Yep. He, he, everything he said. Yeah. Carlton Cole now. It's he knows the Cole. score. He's he the knows new Brené the score. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm following him. He's the new whim off. Yes, Jen. Jen, why are you looking over like Would that? Would you like to do your break then? Would you like to? Because it's 1 hour 15 now. Come on. What's wrong with us? We've yeah. got so right. many videos okay. today. We're going to go one for one, aren't we? One for one on what we've observed on Gareth and Russell's Football Breakdown. We do the jingles. Football Breakdown. Good. This is Russell's Breakdown. Well Russell's done. Breakdown. Right. I like let's get. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Now then. So, Football Breakdown by us. Yep. Right, here's. I shall start you off with this. Uh, Which game? Man United versus Spurs. Tottenham Hotspur. Nice. Uh, he said the commentator. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. They're nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't say that about any. Like, I don't because he's Norwegian, right? Yeah. So he said he's been on thin ice. So yeah. if the paradigm is country of origin, yeah. cliche, joke. Yeah. Can you see where this would get into problems? Yes, I can. <laughs> right. So don't do it then. <laughs> Country of origin, cliche joke. Uh, where's that format going to get you? Because he said, Nor all they can associate, even for a Norwegian to be on this much thin ice, yep. cannot be fun. Yep. All right. Well, let's see how that template works as you start mapping it around non-European countries. I'll book your cell. <laughs> yep. I'm with you on that. Have you got one then? It's your turn for okay. an observation. Yes, it is. All right. I listened to Gary Neville talk about this and about the way in which Solskjaer changed the team, changed the formation, played uh, three at the back and played Cavani up front yeah, with, in his yeah. oldest uh, ever lineup yeah. under Oli. Yeah. Uh, and the elderly. The elderly, yeah. And what Neville said was, I like this. He said Cavani like runs, he chases, you know, he, he does all the pressing, all of that. He says, I like Cavani. I like his work rate. I want to see veins. And I thought that was such a cool thing well, to say. Go and train at West Ham. People are popping Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> We're elderly, elderly. We are Man United and we play the elderly. Elderly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, because they did look amazing. And that, like, as was pointed out in the commentary, it was like um, Fernandez and Cavani and Ronaldo yeah. created 
uh, the, well, it was till Rashford come, Rashford got the third one, but yeah. you know that it, it worked. And other than M3, everyone was defensive. Yeah, minded although what selection. I've heard saying is that Spurs were like the perfect team for them to play because Spurs were in disarray, played a dreadful game, end of Nuno's era, you know. But anyway, it's a see. shame. I see a woman doing a lipstick. When they went, the ref went to check the VAR, there was a woman just like sat by it, just doing her lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> like, and it's really funny because like she just won't bother. Did she, she have a mirror? Room. Little mirror. She looked like she was doing it freehand. That's impressive. She was freestyling. I imagine that's hard to do. Uh, you're looking at me, but I don't wear lipstick. Yes, yeah, sexist pig. I was looking at the wall behind you, <laughs> which I've <laughs> seen <laughs> wearing Ask lipstick. Me. I don't wear it because it's difficult. I used to wear eyeliner. Yeah. That's okay. Would you do that without a mirror? N- well no, 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 no. <laughs> Let me ask Nicola, who does hair and makeup. You could Let's... do the inner bit without a mirror. I hurt my eye then just miming it. I need to push the eyeball in. I hope my eyes ain't gone too close together because we all know what we think of those people. It's gone a bit red. (laughs) Don't say it's red, Jen. You know I don't like to be red. Right. Uh, Your one now. Oh, okay. Um, Kane getting booed by his own fans. Right. What a turnaround that is. Like, Kane, you've got to say, like, Spurs hero over the last... Yep, you one know, of your own. Absolutely. To now boo him... Because he's forced to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We've forced him to be one of your own. <laughs> he's one of them. But what? what I thought, that Harry Kane looks like he's gone off football. <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a sport. <laughs> I don't like it anymore. It's mad, isn't it? Isn't it mad? I wonder what conversations go on before the sort of like the appointment of Conti and the second and no, no. Presumably, like you know, even based on that puff piece Amazon thing, like yeah. you know, all or nothing or whatever. Mm. Like conversations are happening, so people are going like, "Look, we recognise this ain't working." And like, what do you say? Uh, um, Carragher said, "Yeah, it was not a bad sacking; it was yes. a bad appointment." Yes. Like, um, yeah. Like, I wonder if, like, they go to Harry Kane. I mean, what must the relationship with Harry Kane be like now anyway? Yeah. After he's so blatantly wanted to leave. Now he's playing under Nuno, playing, uh, like, f- unimpressive football. Sometimes you think that these, like, narratives are, like, just created in the press. And we know how that happens. Right. They do, that, that is that yeah. is what happens. And you think, oh, Look at Arteta. It turned around. The other day, he went, like, I see a statement. I'm, you know, I'm very happy at Arsenal. Because he was being linked to the Barcelona job. Wow. A couple of weeks ago. <laughs> After like seven, yeah, not seven wins, seven unbeaten, I think they are now. Yeah. Although Arsenal are looking good. Like they did play well against Leicester. Can you keep talking while I just have a little bit yes. of breakfast? Yes, okay. I'm going to move on to the Palace Man City game. I was very happy for Vieira. I, I, li- I love Vieira. I like Vieira. I like him as a person. Uh, I liked him as a player. I'm glad he's, I'm glad, I mean, he's getting a lot of compliments about his style of play at Palace, isn't he? Um, yeah, they but, love him. But they keep on like drawing games, like last minute goals conceded and stuff. But that's a brilliant win, wasn't it? Yeah, but it's like loads of them look well good. Yeah. Like that uh, Gallagher lad. Yeah, he looks brilliant. Like a few others. And uh, um, Wilfred Zaha, he's w- well intense, is how I'd describe him. Yeah. Like he looks like a person who's on the edge of. A, you know when there's a bird in your house? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like like, a like bird. there's always a bird in his house. He looks like he is the bird. <laughs> like he's like. He's got like a in- level of intensity. <laughs> <laughs> like he's got a level of like panic. And obviously I know he's brilliant and effective. So footballer. you've looked into the eyes of birds in houses. I'll keep them. I'll give them a good looking at, mate. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder whether to keep them. I quite like it. The feeling of it. Like, a bird. like especially when they're just walking on the floor. They stop flying for a bit and just walk. I don't feel like birds in the house happens as much as it used it's to. Really, it's actually been stamped out. And I think that's a shame. <laughs> when you were a kid... You used to always hear people say, there's a bird in the there's house. There's a bird in the house, there's a bird in the house, there's a bird in, like, there's a bird in the bank, there's pigeons walked into the bank. <laughs> Things used to happen. Like it was have, better. Have birds learnt not to go in houses? They've had, the, the, they've had the guts kicked out of them. They've <laughs> lost their moxie, they've lost their balls. <laughs> bird in the house. So, um, back to your point about Vieira. Yeah. I think you should read erotic bedtime stories. Like his sort of his voice is very sort of um, beautiful. Yeah. Like Again, is this just the French? No, no, you're right, because well, there, there, there is a tombre, a sort of a tombre. Yeah. Yes, that is a perfect word. You know. He's very... Um... Even though I've actually aroused myself a bit there, all this, the whole episode we've been talking about taking fire. You Viagra. didn't take... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's Not again. again. Um, I didn't like it when... The, uh, still on, I think, on your game, mate. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah City Palace. City that, Palace. But they're amazing, because... 
a city was still good. Like city, there was yeah. moments like you know, just I only watched Match of the Day, but like there was like um, you think, oh my god, the way they move the ball, it's so beautiful and brilliant and fast, and the dispatch is sort of almost so good, it's almost boring. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like, oh my god, they're so good at doing this yeah. that it's tiresome. It's interesting, isn't it? You, you've got that situation at the moment where. There are every now and again there are games for City. I mean, they went out of the League Cup in the week. You know, actually, Man City had in yeah. what you'd call to a bad week West for Ham. them to West Ham, exactly. And then because West Ham had a good week. And what always comes back is they still need that striker. striker. And then you look at if the only situation. there were a striker <laughs> yeah. that was depressed beyond being able to play football anymore. Yeah, exactly. It's interesting. Wonder what will happen there. Well, yeah, we don't know. Is it my one or your one? Uh, you, got one? you can go. I, I think I said mine already about the Chelsea Newcastle game that um, I was glad to see a picture of Alex and Steve Bruce at the cricket smiling. Because like life goes on. Life goes on. Things He's probably are had okay. a good package, mate. Mate, he got a good apparently six or eight million. I That's think. nice. Six yeah. or eight million. Then yeah. you can do. You can relax now. Oh, I hope so. Well, but of course, he money's, can. Like, money's not everything. Money not really. Did isn't. you see Squid Game? Money not everything. <laughs> That's the message. Um, when we're talking, this is match of the day analysis. Wright and Shearer is my favourite lineup. Like yeah. when it's match of the day, I like to see Wright and Shearer. I was going to ask because West Ham were on Sunday. Were you happy with Dublin and Wilder? Actually, I didn't watch because I uh, watched it on. Uh, I watched it live. Of course you did. Of course you did. So uh, I didn't watch. I ain't watched match. Who was in two. the sky? Um. I don't know. I was oh. watching it on a phone <laughs> in the car. I didn't watch the post thing, but I feel like it was pretty typical. I've not watched the subsequent analysis because yeah. I had a gig. So I was watching it and I actually, again, went on late <laughs> to watch the end of the game. Because like... How's know, that going down? Well, people think it's unprofessional. It's not what Carl and Carl would have in the academy. No, no. Like if they were watching TV shows instead of playing the game. You'd be the new Ben Rama. You've got to step up, son. Yeah, do your defensive work. Get back, track back. Turn up, oh, turn up on time. Turn up on time. Yeah, it's wrong. But I, it was good, though, because I got to see uh, you know, a lovely 4-1 victory. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. For West Ham. It's cheered me up. Uh, but what I will say about Alan Shearer's shirt is mm. it looks like it's made of uh, the icing on a wedding cake. <laughs> <laughs> like a grey wedding cake. I do know what it you mean. It looks too sort of like a thick, coarse thing. Yeah. Like, but not hard, but thick yeah. like the icing on a wedding cake i actually looked at it because you do pay a lot of attention to what pundits wear well i do mm. like one does i think mm. when because you're looking at them as people as well as pundits <laughs> people we're people not just pundits <laughs> and uh ian wright wears a lot of really cool gear right you like right he look. looks good have you seen sometimes you get a shot down you see his socks and his footwear what does he go for uh like cool socks mm. like interesting socks yeah sometimes you see um when you see Pondit's footwear, it really can make quite a difference to how I feel about them. Yeah, because someone's Gary Lineker wearing them white trainers or yeah. they're sort of adult trainers. I don't like him wearing <laughs> white trainers. I saw it last week wearing white trainers. Mm. I thought, no. I don't think they need to wear full suits. It's like they wear suits for important games. Yes. Don't they now? FA Cup, stuff like that. Mm. I think there's a, there's a mid... Well, What's surely, the midpoint? A, loafer, a middle a ground. A shoe? Because mm. Sky, they really like pimp them up, don't they? Not, not a buckly boot or a... You don't want a buckley boot. A Chelsea boot? boot? A Chelsea boot's a good call, Jen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a Chelsea boot. Not a winkle picker. A squared off toe, I would say. Not a, <laughs> like a... Like, you don't want those shoes that, like, go around each individual toe. They actually, I think, should be banned. Yeah. Like, they should be struck People off. People still wear those. Like, they say they're comfortable, but I don't want to think about toes and it, no. as you know i'm learning spanish and i'd like to say to the people of spain firstly hola but <laughs> <laughs> after that the fact that you've not got your separate word for toes is a deficiency in your language and i don't like the idea of there being hand fingers and foot fingers because i don't like to think of the toes as fingers <laughs> like i don't like to think of them like i think it's quite silly like, <laughs> like imagine some, some token like sort of drumming on your leg someone imagine someone put their foot on your leg and then start to drum their toes like, <laughs> like, like moving that. tree roots like moving tree roots crawling across your thigh <laughs> looking to sort of embed themselves in the sinew and take root and suck up the precious nutrients some people really like Toes and feet, don't they? Oh, yeah, people that have eroticised them. Mm. And now here are some of those people. I think Chappelle, Dave Chappelle, I think he eroticises his feet. He's, sort of, he's made jokes about it. Right. Tarantino, famously, always includes... And Alan Shearer. 
<laughs> and Newcastle's <laughs> own favourite son, Alan Shearer. <laughs> Uh, here's some of my observations. Klopp and Potter had a beard moment, which I thought you would like. As they met, they sort of, as they said hello, they both oh. went, beard, oh, <laughs> beard. they sort of pointed at each other's beards. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, but a beard, oh, but a beard, like that. This beard chat's big these days. We're all doing it. Because it's Movember. <laughs> I just think in general. <laughs> right, it's just in general. Uh, Mane didn't mind his goal being disallowed. He didn't. He, he laughed sort of about laughed. it. Oh, yeah, did it, me. I'm thinking about it now. Yeah. Salah didn't mind that much. No. And then ultimately, they those drew goals the game. were necessary. I know. It was, I, I think, I mean, I was speaking to TV's Simon Rimmer uh, about the Liverpool game. Why he, are you speaking to all your <laughs> ex work colleagues? I'll become jealous. <laughs> well, you know, they're nice men. Oh, did you go out of them? No, no. I was. I, I, Simon, I text Just Simon Rimmer chat. sometimes. Write your friends with people. He's allowed a life, isn't he? Yeah. Well, maybe not, Jen. Is he? <laughs> I, was, I was doing a name drop, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> oh, I see. But uh, <laughs> he, was at, he was at the game, and uh, he said that they just, it just looked like they just gave up. They got so, they got so cocky about being 2 0 up that they just kind of started dinking it around. They're like, oh, that, that's actually like a fairy tale. That's yeah. actually, that's the tortoise and the hare. Mm. And the tortoise is Brighton, and up front, their false nine, Trossard. Yeah. Which sounds like a pair of underpants <laughs> designed to rigidly manage genitals. <laughs> Trossard. Have you yeah. got... A, I'm wearing... Don't worry. I've to, oh, no. Jermaine Defoe's tricked you into taking a Viagra. Don't worry. I'm wearing a Trossard. <laughs> They're all trussed up so nice and tight. Is that because... Aren't the bras called Gossard or something? Why are players wearing bras? <laughs> oh, we had a tweet about this. There's, uh, there is a tracker tracking their performance inside the bras. So it's not to hold your body in a certain Wait, way. Wait, is it just like straps? No, it's a bra. <laughs> it's not got breasts. It's not got breasts. It's no. not like, no, it's not like this cup sizes. <laughs> it's not like breasts. It's not bosoms. It's like a one flat thing. Yeah. Like, But it, hang on, yeah. But it's the exact shape well, of a bra. It's little, it's almost... Except it's not acknowledging... Right, this is what I say. Imagine a bra wasn't saying there's two of these guys... <laughs> But just one guy. That is that. It's a one guy bra. It's like, you see how you're in the, coming to Cyclops? Imagine hey. a Cyclops <laughs> version of a bra. Yeah, it's like... Is it like a little tiny crop top? Yes. Okay. Well, it's like a shoe compared to those little... It's like a shoe. It's like a shoe compared to... It's like a shoe. Compared to those little toe shoes that Ross was on about, it's the normal shoe version. Yeah, that's the best way of describing it. I think when Jenny said little, little crop top, crop she nailed it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, crop top. You went on to say it's like a shoe for your tits. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I didn't, I didn't say you, that. You tried to invent a tit shoe. You went on Dragon's Den with a tit shoe and wanted the dragons to invest in it. Well, I'm out. Peter Jones, what do you think of my tit shoe? <laughs> I don't know, man. Not, I don't like it. I don't think you should be allowed in here. We'll cut this from the programme. I'll give you 50%. <laughs> The tit shoe's going to take a lot of marketing because the name of it's offensive. <laughs> yeah, we'll change that. We'll change that straight away. Um, I but, want Theo Pafitas. It's him or no one. He would back it, mate. He, took, he <laughs> likes, he he likes a risk, to gamble. He's a risk, he's a risk taker. taker. I got where I am today by taking risks. I'll take a risk on your tit shoe. <laughs> I'm in for 100 grand. Whole 100 grand on your tit shoe. I'm wearing a tit shoe now. <laughs> it sounds like you're saying tissue. <laughs> Perhaps that's for the best. Yeah. It's a weird thing to have started. We shouldn't even have done it. Oh, dear. Okay. Harry Kane's gone off football. <coughs> I want the law, offside law changed <laughs> now. Hang on. What do you mean by this? My friend brought this up recently. He said, wouldn't it be better if you scrapped it? And I said, no, no, no you wouldn't. can't scrap it. You just, it should be, if there's an, if there's an overlap, the player, is not on, the player is not offside. If there's an overlap. You know what I mean? Because what they're doing now is it's like it's almost seems like if the majority of the attacking player is offside, yeah. but not all, that's given as offside. You know what I mean? Like there's a couple of goals disallowed, I think, this week. That if they'd have gone, oh, I well, see still, what you there's mean. a bit of an overlap. The defender's not fully in front of them, but no, they're sort of overlapping. But but then what constitutes an overlap, Ross? What if people just start flailing their arms around? Then you then the overlap is like two meters. It can't be. They're gonna flail, do you think? This will lead to the phenomenon of flailing. Well, look look at the Look at the way in which defending has changed now to, to the point where players put, put arms I'll behind back their back. Of handball. Like um, what I'm saying is, through ru like rules uh, affect of, the of, game, affect and evolve the game. Yeah. And if suddenly the rule was like, as long as you're, you have to be fully behind or in front of that player, 
like the people would like they'd start doing di- things differently. <laughs> It'll affect their behaviour. Behavioural science. That's behavioural science. I think the offside rule seems to be in a good place at the moment. Gareth, I feel like too many goals got disallowed at the weekend. Don't you? I, don't I mean, know. this would all change if it inconvenienced me in some way. Um, we're at 90 minutes. Okay. okay. All right. We'll do next... your results soon. Oh, shit. And that's right. We're just going to do the results. We're not going to do the predictions because we decided it's boring. We'll do the predictions off air and we'll do the results on air. Yep. Uh, have you got any more of observations, mate? No, I was just looking at Virgin Media. We're going to come and fix my broadband. But <laughs> Tell you what, Virgin Media, you need to step up your game, You really son. do, guys. Step it up. Or Gal's going to go Re- with another company. Oh. BT, give him an offer. Do you cover New Cross? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that everyone in the world. <laughs> Wait, there's been an offer from a podcast. <laughs> Did you hear Gary Lineker use the word sagacious? Oh, sagacious meaning wise. Meaning wise, meaning showing keen mental discernment and good judgment, which I knew, of course. <laughs> he used it on the back of, off the back of uh, Thomas Tuchel or Tuckle. Uh, it's not Tuckle, is it? Well, I heard someone say Tuckle yesterday. Oh, um, this always happens, doesn't it? I they know, change it. I know. Um, anyway, he did an interview, and then off the back of that, Lineker went sagacious as ever. I was like, I'm Hello, much of the Gary. day. Hello. I've only just got over Alan Shearer's shirt. Well, Alan, shirt's, Alan Shearer's come dressed as a wedding cake. <laughs> You're <laughs> using massive words. What's going on on this show? It's yeah. like a poem. And did you see Tuchel was doing up his zips during the interview? Was he? <laughs> yeah, he just Leave kept them. Just doing up zips. They were asking him questions. He just had bzzz, bzzz, <laughs> various <laughs> zips doing up. Like... Yeah, don't do your zips. Not the, during the interview. Leave them. Yeah. It's a nervous tick, mm. isn't it? Two yep. calls tickle. <laughs> uh, it's my new game show. Mark <laughs> Healy said, I worked a shift at the Le- Legends Bar in Riverside. It was Middlesbrough v Newcastle. I met Sir Jack Charlton, served him bottle of wine at his table, and one of the lads working there said he had to squeeze past him in the corridor and brushed his ass with the back of his hand. He was very happy about this. Hang on. Who was happy? We don't know. We don't know about that. <laughs> The Ali Walker on Instagram. I queued for a knee. I queued for a wee next to Martin Chivers. Like it was an offer. Wee next to Martin Chivers. It's more entertaining than what's going on at the pitch at Tottenham. I'll tell you that. Who went in a civilian toilet for some reason. I wanted the cubicle as I don't like the thought of other people's splashback hitting me. Although I may have made an exception for Martin Chivers. Other people's splashback don't hit you. I said well, to him, no. you go mate, as if he was my actual mate. He said thank you and was very handsome. That's I've seen it's landed nice. on my shoes. Other people's wee wee. Yeah. In a posh hotel, you have a glass thing come up to uh, prevent that. It's almost better when you've got any any kind of divide there. I think j- even if it's just for visuals, I just think get it that just what's in America. It cost? They're like in America, the cubicles is might as well be like saloon doors. You yeah. might as well just be wearing a bra, a man's bra, a tit shoe. <laughs> Right, because it's just it's so high up off the ground, so low down. It's yeah. not it's not good enough. <laughs> but at the at the um, pissoir, as you may call it, or urinal, <laughs> uh, like they really try and get a barrier between you there. They care about that. Like they don't want people to reach over. Well, good. That's how it should be. No, but what about the tip bra shoe cubicle? Well, I don't know about that. But I just think I don't. I don't like it. I I've, I was thinking this the other day. I don't I, like people because I'm famous, so people will take a, like, a look at my penis. Wow. Yeah. Did anyone take a picture? Well, no, that that's be, too far. That's actually an offence. No, they took a picture with their mind. Don't use your mind to photograph me right now. Yeah. So I always have to make sure I'm just slightly aroused before going to the toilet. <laughs> to make sure I give a good account Colton of myself. Colton Cole trick. Colton Cole! I don't like it, though. I thought it the other day, and what I realised is, until maybe halfway through my life, I always went in a cubicle. And then I got to a point where I thought... You can't keep doing it, mate. Can't keep doing it. you can if it makes you comfortable. So I don't anymore. Uh, Listen, I've just got one more observation. Tell me it, mate. And that is, did you see, I mean, uh, against West Ham, the Villa player, uh, Nakamba, whose first name is Marvellous. And I thought, what a brilliant name, Marvellous Nakamba. Because that's the perfect commentary name, isn't it? Marvellous (laughs) Nakamba. And indeed, you'd you'd be constantly reaching towards using his name in your commentary. Of course you you would. I remember there was a success at Watford. I don't don't think he's still there anymore. The irony. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And I thought, Phil, I've got loads of good names because they've got Matt Target as well. That's a good... Yeah, I know. I said the cop shows. Yeah. Target and Cash. Target and Cash. Ings and Mings. Ings and Mings. Marvellous Nakamba. They've got that lovely geezer in the dugout, old Foo Fighter. <laughs> it's a rocking club, but still when the Mighty Hammers come to Villa Park, we I, march off with three points. I looked into other funny uh, football names 
uh, along the same lines. You've well, done some research. this was only a couple. Jen's furious because so, we're approaching the end, and you've like you're essentially doing an item called Gareth's yeah. well, yeah. along, names. Well, I'll add to this each week, but along the lines of marvelous Nakamba, so confident that this is going to work. <laughs> we've got da- do it each week. We've got Danny Invincible, great right, name, played okay. for Kilmarnock, Australian, played for Kilmarnock, and then this is the last one. Thank God, <laughs> and he is Italian, so I don't think there's anything wrong with this. Yeah. His name is Kevin Lasagna. <laughs> Because I suppose there must have been a place or a town or a thing for Lasagna at some point. All right. All right, that's enough of that now, mate. Sorry. If you don't mind. Now, right, so let's do the results uh, The results of last week. So we'll do the predictions off air because we worked out that it was boring. And actually, yeah. I think this additional effort into production has created, I would call this the best show we've ever done. Agreed. Carl Cole was good. The content, the comedy content has been bold and audacious. Yeah. We've not had too much Jenny May Finn. It's <laughs> everything you need from a successful we've football a, podcast. Do you know what the main factor is? Go on. Not as much breakfast. I I did stop eating that breakfast because I could feel it was actually wrong. And it was a shame because Jade's done a great job of that breakfast. It looks lovely. It's nice. It's getting cold. I've got the porridge there. I, I was know. enjoying the breakfast. But you've got to put... Look, I can't cold tell you. Turn up, fist bump, have you greeted everyone? Yes, I do, Colton. Thank you. See you on the 16th for that West Ham TV show. <laughs> Via Zoom. The didn't you say, could I do that, Colton, <laughs> in a pre-recorded message on my phone? Oh, that'd be a disappointment. Yeah, I know. I'm a bit like that. Um, okay, so... Okay, so it's time for prediction time. And that's the time that it is now. <laughs> and results, I mean. So, Saturday the 30th of October, there was a set you of don't, football you don't need to matches do. that okay. were played between the English Premier League clubs, <laughs> Leicester and Arsenal. I predicted 2 all. Gareth predicted 2-1. Jenny predicted 1-0. Actual 2-0. None of us get no points. Because it was 2-0 to the Arsenal. I thought I predicted Arsenal would win that. Yeah. Why didn't I? I misremembered because we want it to happen. I see. Burnley Brentford. I predict one all. Gareth predicts two one. Jenny predicts two nil to Brentford. It's actually three one Burnley. Yeah. None of us get it right. Liverpool v Bright- Brighton. I predict three one to Liverpool, which it should have been. Gareth predicted two nil to Liverpool. Jenny may Finn three nil. Actual two two. None of us are getting anything. Awful. We've got no business being in this game. City v Palace. I predict one all. I was closest. <laughs> Gareth 3-1 to City Jenny 1-0 City Actual as we know and have discussed 2-0 to Palace Newcastle Chelsea I predict 2-0 to Chelsea I get a point Gareth predicts the same gets a point Jenny predicts 3-1 and is the closest I would say because she had won the numbers correct because it actually was 3-0 to Chelsea Watford Southampton 2-1 I predict Gareth predicts 2-1 but reverse and gets a point damn him yes. and uh, Jenny May Finn predicts 3-0 and the actual result is a 1-0 away win Tottenham v Man U uh, I predicted that Man United would win it 2-1. Gareth predicted Man United would win 2-0. Oh. And uh, no one predicted 3-0. Jenny get, didn't get no points. Now it's time for the games on Sunday, the 31st. <laughs> uh, all right, so the actual result between Norwich and Leeds was 2-1 away win. I pre- correctly predicted that result. Oh. Did you? The f- 1-0. The- Oh, I predicted Leeds 1-0. Yeah, I didn't get three points. That's okay. the real gem, isn't it? That's the juice. That's if you get a few of them, you, you saw ahead. That's what you want. Nil nil, Gareth predicted gets nothing. Jenny, nothing. Why cause she predicts one all. Villa V the mighty mighty hammers. I predict two nil and I get a point. Gareth predicts one nil, gets a point. Jenny predicts one nil, get a point. The result of course was four one to the West Ham United. Wolves V Everton, I predicted one nil. Gareth predicts home win and gets another point. Jenny gets the exact right score. Oh! Two one. Well done, Jenny May Finn. This means that in the league now, Gareth still ahead, 40 points in first. Russell, who I am, 30 points second. Jenny May Finn, who's played for two weeks less than any of us, breathing down our necks, which would be horrific in real life, (laughs) with 21 points. So there you go. That's the results. We always finish that on a tedious recital of numbers that surely is off-putting for everybody. We've had some sponsorship offers. Things are looking great with the podcast. Have we? Yeah. We have, Jen, but there we'll is condition. <laughs> they said that we've got to get rid of that Irish person. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. All right, so do you think football it's is not, nice? Hang on. Is that why we've got all these breakfasts? Okay. <laughs> is what the is, sponsor? Gareth, surely you're not breakfast finding issue. Breakfast from the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> With my delicious <laughs> wow sausages and Heinz beans. <laughs> delicious breakfast. Or oh, Quaker's oats. That's why I use them. <laughs> breakfast and, from the 70s. I knew you couldn't have just been doing this to be unprofessional. I'm hungry because mm. I'm not it because I'm uh, fasting. I've not ever had time to tell you about my Spanish lessons. I've not had time to tell you that I've been to trampoline land. I've not had time to tell you 
It's okay. That's fine. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love you all. Keep communicating with us. Remember to message us your questions at hello at Russell Brand or any of our social media things. You should follow Gareth at True Gareth. You called Seal? I think I'm called. You're Gareth Trues, aren't you? That's Gareth right. Trues That's on right. Twitter and uh, stay in touch with us. If you follow Jenny, if you like. If you like being in, well, just maybe you could look <laughs> at her eyes. <laughs> oh. oh, Jen, you're what? lovely. Oh. Hey. <laughs> All right, then. Football is nice. Yep. Football is nice. Next week, let's get Kevin Lasagna, I think. Kevin Lasagna. Oh, 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 oh. We've got Tony Adams next week, so yes. there's no need to worry. Tony Adams is going to be... Tony Adams is going to be strong. All right, let's stop. <laughs> stop the podcast. Stop the podcast. Football is nice. Thank you.